Thank you <clears throat> very, very much, uh, Hillel, for that a wonderful introduction. And uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to address this eighth summit uh, uh, for human rights and democracy in Geneva. It's really a privilege uh, to be here together with uh, so many fantastic individuals who are indeed changing the world. If I had to sum up the state of global, uh, the, the global state of democracy in four words, I'd say democracy is under attack. Uh, the latest annual report from Freedom House, um, as well as the latest reports from The Economist um, um, yeah, on democracy, describes a decade of democratic decline. Um, the Economist Intelligence Unit says that we live in an age of anxiety, uh, a time when more than two billion people still live under authoritarian regimes. This negative trend is not limited by location. Democratic regression has been registered almost everywhere from Europe to Asia to Africa and the Americas. There is an ongoing global struggle with uh, those regimes who capture states to satisfy their hunger for unlegitimized power, or as Freedom House puts it, sacrifice citizens' safety for regime security. Among the various methods used by rulers to be able to extract resources or exert power are, for example, demonizing and eliminating the opposition, suffocate civic space, silencing journalists, tampering with constitutions to prolong your stay at the top of the food chain. I believe that um, many of uh, you who are invited uh, human rights champions here at this Geneva Summit, you know all about this global culture of criminal incumbents that are copy-pasting worst practices from east to west and from north to south. Civil society is one of the universal threats that run through every successful democracy. The shrinking space for civil society is one of the gravest threats to democracy that we've seen in a generation. These undemocratic practices are surprisingly enough accompanied by elections, or I would say theater elections. Far too many people are still ruled by autocrats who are hiding behind the ballot box in the hope that doing so will mask the fact that they're engaged in democratic theater. Uh, and as one scholar recently said, uh, dictators love elections. But uh, my main concern today is not so much uh, the dictators or the authoritarian rulers, but the Democrats, the elected Democrats. The worst practices initiated by non-democratic leaders have unfortunately also affected the global climate. I'm very concerned to see fundamental democratic principles under threat in stable democracies. And we know that particularly in parts of Europe, um, we are witnessing uh, regression partly due to popular disappointment with the pace of progress since the fall of communism. Uh, but at the same time, um, the continent is um, now uh, suffering from both the previous economic and the current refugee crisis, which is fueling a combustible mix of nationalism, xenophobia, and populism that threatens all of Europe. Um, not only in Europe, but also across the world, in an increasing number of stable democracies, undemocratic practices are creeping into the political fabric, often explained um, as supported by the majority at the election urns. This is a very immature take on what democracy means. Democracy is not dictatorship by the majority. Um, what we have seen in countries that practice um, democracy in this way is an increased political control of the media, weakened institutions for checks and balances, a growing disrespect for international law, including um, um, 
a growing disrespect for the right to seek asylum and attacks on and suspicion of civil society. And I'm actually speaking about many countries around the world. We can see the beginnings of a very alarming discussion um, um, or discourse that is celebrating majority elections while arguing against human rights, openly embracing the idea of illiberal democracy. And we know where that road has taken us in the past. There's a third issue of concern um, uh, that I would like to touch on, and that is the discontent with democracy and what democracy has uh, delivered or not delivered. In many stable democracies, there is a legitimate need for new answers to the problems that citizens face and where they don't see their leaders bringing them um, any future um, that they want. Um, it is, uh, for example, in the um, uh, presidency of the community of democracies, um, the United States of America and uh, my representative of the presidency here, Ambassador Keith Harper, believe, um, uh, understands that not even uh, such a country is immune from problems stemming from citizens losing faith in political institutions, prompting Freedom House actually to warn for the first time uh, that um, there is a negative development. So this is something that the community of democracies need to answer to. We need to find ways of cooperating between democracies to fight the democratic recession, to fight the concept of a liberal democracy, and to respond for the renewal of democracy. Um, Democracy is really about the ability to fix failures. That's the difference. Uh, one of my heroes all time is Amartya Sen, who showed that the difference between a democracy's way of responding to a problem and a non-democracy's way of responding to the problem is not necessarily the quality of your government, but it is the pace with which your government is responding to the problem. In an unelected uh, government that is not <coughs> responsible to its citizens, it can take years and millions of lives before you change a policy that leads uh, people to, to die, for example, um, in, in famines. But in a, an elected uh, government, you respond because otherwise, you will actually have to resign. You will lose your power if you don't respond to criticism. So criticism and addressing mistakes and realizing that you did wrong and the ability to find, again, the right track, that is what distinguishes democracies from non-democracies. And we have done it in the past. We have rectified. We have reformed. And we will do it again. Um, let me stop whining for a moment. There is actually enough bright spots um, around the world to give us hope for the future uh, in, what, uh, in which all governments serve all the peop people, um, majority and minority alike. Um, democracy can be improved by elections, and we have a number of fascinating uh, elections uh, the last year that have shown us um, uh, that, again, uh, we can have another uh, possible Lech Wałęsa or Václav Havel uh, or Nelson Mandela, who, from um, a situation as uh, sometimes imprisoned, sometimes tortured, sometimes defeated leader of, um, uh, of groups that are demanding democracies, can rise to become a leader. Uh, and the foremost leader of, uh, of her country. So um, it is um, not necessarily so that the elections in 2015 will be able to, um, uh, to make Aung San Suu Kyi um, uh, the leader of her country, but we know that they are on a very, very good way, and it's absolutely not ruled out that we will be able to see this within the very near future. Also in Nigeria, um, we could see that for the second time in a row, Nigeria was able to 
uh, be, be a global example for peaceful, trans uh, peaceful uh, elections. And um, uh, Tunisia, of course, continues to build a democratic foundation, being the success story of the Arab Spring. Sri Lanka uh, is another good example, uh, not to talk about Burkina Faso, and let me also uh, mention uh, Venezuela, uh, where we see that uh, even though um, there is still a lot to do uh, to um, get democracy back to Venezuela, it was possible through peaceful elections um, to have a majority that was other than the, what the government wanted to see in Parliament. It's an absolutely fantastic achievement. And uh, I believe that uh, the, the, the world has globally given far too little recognition to all the Venezuelans who have been fighting to get this far. And I am absolutely certain that they will be able to go all the way um, and, and show again that a transition to democracy in a peaceful way is, is possible in Venezuela as it is in so many other countries. Um, sometimes you hear that democracy is a Western thing. When I was in India last year and I asked Indians if they thought uh, democracy was a Western concept, they laughed at me. I would be laughed at in many parts of the world because it is so evident that uh, all of the human rights champions in every single country, and we know that every single country has human rights champions, they're not fighting for ideas stemming from other countries. They are fighting for the very, very simple idea that if you believe in the fact that every person has a value that is not more nor less than any other person, then you also have a right to be able to participate in the governance of your country. You have a right to freedom. Uh, you have a right to live in dignity. You have the right to, uh, to be a respected citizen and, and uh, to enjoy your freedoms. It is, there is nothing, it is just so ridiculous that I don't have words for it, that this would be a geographical or even even um, a cultural idea, because it's not. Throughout the years since, since mankind came into existence until uh, the years we will, um, in the future that we cannot count, this will be what people strive for. People will always strive for freedom. Um, democracy uh, does come in many shapes and forms, though. The community of democracies uh, show that there is no one model. We have as many models or even more models than we have member and participant countries. We have more than 100 countries that are invited every two years to our ministerial conferences and 28 countries presently in our governing council. And they all have different um, systems. Um, and they all come together for 19 principles of democracy uh, that, um, uh, that uh, make up our Warsaw Declaration. Today, it is actually a fact that more than two and a half billion people are represented through their elected governments on our governing council alone. Um, not counting the billions uh, represented through governments invited to participate in our ministerial meetings. This represents more than half of the planet but it's really not enough. I'm very much looking forward to the day when we can say that everyone lives in a country where uh, the core democratic principles enshrined in the Warsaw Declaration are respected. And until then, our work and your work will continue. Thank you very much. Thank you.